the enormous professional cost of not listening and its impact on your workplace reputation. Rita's a busy professional. She's got huge responsibilities at home and at work. As the chief operating officer of a publicly listed organisation, the monkey's always on her back, with people coming to her to solve their problems all the time. It's completely exhausting. She's received multiple awards from business magazines and women's leadership communities and consistently has been at the top of her profession and the top of her industry. But she finds leading in these times just a little tougher. She constantly asks herself, why is coming to work every day like being put in a boxing ring blindfolded with one arm tied behind my back and three people in the ring all at the same time. Based on the way she's led in the past, she thinks that more speaking, more talking, more communicating, more energy, faster resolutions to problems will help her fight her way out of back-to-back meetings. She doesn't realise that The Energizer Bunny approach to leadership, well, it stopped being effective for Rita. It leaves her feeling completely drained by lunchtime and disappointed by the end of the day. It's starting to become even more evident to her manager. As Rita walked out of her performance review with her boss, she was completely flat with the feedback she'd received. She was told her focus was far too far ahead of her team, of her peers, and of the organisation. The feedback was consistent. People felt rushed, interrupted, and another problem to be ticked off Rita's list. She comes across as closed-minded, quick to judge, too proud to admit she could ask another question or even acknowledge where she hasn't got it right. When she arrives for a team or individual discussion, She's physically present, but she's mentally distant. As a result, the others, the speakers, the participants in those meetings all withdraw. They tell Rita exactly what she wants to hear because they know she isn't listening. This kind of miscommunication has cost her organisation. Late projects, defective products being shipped, billing errors, a spike in customer complaints as a result, and consequently declining profitability and an investigation by the regulators. To make matters worse, great employees are leaving unexpectedly. As Rita reflected on her manager's feedback, she was shocked. She was disappointed. Yet her manager couldn't be clearer. Her manager said, Rita, you've got 90 days to adjust your approach. And if there's no change, then I'll need to make a change. After the meeting, Rita took the fire stairs to the underground parking lot. She just needed time and space to process everything that was going on. She thought her performance review would go completely differently. She thought she was in line for a promotion, and now she's struggling to make sense of the changes she needs to make. Rita pondered, I wonder if I even have a future in this organisation. As she arrived to the bottom of the parking lot, Rita decided to jump into her car and turn the music on, her most inspiring songs. And over the next 10 minutes, Rita mentally scrolled through the list of leaders she admired. The ones that got the best from her, and others that didn't. She fast forward through the list. There were men there, there were women there, there were young and old, and people from work and home and sport, as well as school, and from travel, as well as family and friends. And she asked herself, Who's doing this well? Who can I learn from? At this moment, two people emerged in Rita's thoughts. Who does it well? My current manager. 
and from my teenage years, my world champion triathlon coach. Two vastly different people in two very different roles. And what they had in common, the ability to profoundly and deeply listen. Both listened to what Rita said, yet their superpower was their ability to listen beyond the words. They listened to Rita's energy, her state of mind, what she was thinking, not just what she was saying. They listened to her fears and to her aspirations, to what she was feeling and how congruent her actions were with her words. Rita's not isolated or unique in facing these challenges, whether at work or at home. Rita's not alone, having a mindset that the most effective way to communicate and to influence someone is through speaking. It's a hardwired assumption that effective communications is about how you talk, Being an influential leader is all about what you say. In Western societies, we're biased towards the heroic and the charismatic speaker. If I ask you to name a famous speaker, no doubt you would quickly name Winston Churchill, John Kennedy, Eleanor Roosevelt, Martin Luther King, or possibly Rosa Parks. Maybe other names would come to mind for great speakers. Yet, let me ask you, name three famous listeners. You'd probably struggle with that. Across roles and industries and organisations, cultures and countries, I sense there's a prejudice for the speaking leader to be noticed, to be noticed over the listening leader. There is another way. I think it's possible to balance speaking and listening to create powerful and influential communicators as they speak and as they listen. Perhaps you've been in a situation like Rita. You can remember that listener, someone who changed the direction in your life, the person who listened to you deeply, to your fears and to your aspirations. They saw your full potential. They heard what was going on for you in that moment. What you felt, what you said, what you didn't say, what you thought, and ultimately what you meant. Listening is a deeply human and intuitive skill. Yet it's also a practice. Listening is the first skill you learn inside your mother's womb at the age of 32 weeks, before you could see and before you could speak. Ancient cultures continue to cultivate and teach the wisdom of the listening through the example of their elders to future generations. It's no coincidence that the best storytelling cultures are also the best listening cultures. Listening is a skill, it's a strategy, and it's a practice. It's a way to balance how you communicate. Here's an invitation for you. If you've followed me, you'll know that I believe that listening is a skill that can be learned and is a critical skill in modern times. Many of you have asked me consistently These workshops you run for big corporates, Oscar, can you make them available in public groups? Can you create a group of six to ten where we can learn together? If you want to move from reactive to deliberate, from surprise to impactful, may I invite you to explore the opportunity to build more listening muscle. And because listening is a contact sport, We need to practice. We need to practice in an environment that's safe and supportive with other workplace professionals who want to improve their listening. So if this sounds like you, somebody who's frustrated with the way they're communicating at the moment in the workplace, and you want to join the Deep Listening Academy for leaders in the workplace, please, if this sounds like you, just send me an email podcast 
at oscartrimboli.com. That's podcast at oscartrimboli.com with a deep listening academy in the subject and I'll reply with all the information you need. Now, you might be wondering what's involved in something like this. It takes place over a six-week period. You undertake a listening assessment at the beginning to understand your current listening barriers. You will learn about the five levels of listening, the neuroscience of listening. You'll get to practice together with other workplace professionals on a regular basis. You'll receive a copy of the Deep Listening book and the 50 practice cards. Ultimately, you'll get four hours a week back in your schedule because you'll have the right conversations the first time because you'll be listening to what people mean rather than what they say. If this sounds like you, just send me an email, podcast at oscartrimboli.com. That's podcast at oscartrimboli.com with a deep listening academy in the subject, and I'll get back to you with the details. I'm Oscar Trimboli, and I'm on a quest to create 100 million deep listeners in the world. You've given me the greatest gift of all. You've listened to me. Thanks for listening.